So Newton's second law of motion the way we know was not the original version Newton gave instead Newton described the law in terms of the rate of change of momentum being equal to the net force that acts on a body so understanding both the equations is key to solving many physics problems with ease and let us see here how the two equations are equivalent so the linear momentum of a particle is nothing but a vector quantity p that can be written as a product of mass and velocity and what we can quickly observe is that since mass m is always a positive quantity and a scalar on the right hand side we are left with one vector quantity only and that is the velocity vector and therefore we can say that the momentum p has the same direction as velocity v now if you differentiate both sides with respect to time what you get is dp upon dt is equal to m dv upon dt and this simplifies beautifully if you write dv upon dt as acceleration a or dp upon dt is equal to ma but then ma is the net force acting on a mass so what we have here is net force acting on a mass is not only equal to the product of mass and acceleration but also the rate of change of momentum and this change in momentum is always in the direction of the net force thus the equation f net is equal to dp upon dt and f net is equal to ma are equivalent expressions of newton's second law of motion for a particle and you can read this equation in several ways you could say that if a net force acts on a body it changes its linear momentum p well you can flip it backwards and say that if the linear momentum of a body changes there has to be a force acting on it the same thing can be stated in yet another way and that is if there is no net external force that is f net is zero p cannot change because you see if net force is set to zero then p has to be a constant for dp upon dt to become zero well now we can extend the idea of linear momentum to a system of particles so consider a system of n particles where each one has its own mass velocity and therefore linear momentum we can also assume that the particles can interact with each other and external forces can act on them then the system in its entirety has a total linear momentum p which can be written as the vector sum of the individual particles linear momentum or capital p is equal to p1 plus p2 plus p3 and so on till the last particle pn which therefore equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus m3 v3 and so on and if you are interested in derivation of this equation you can find it in the description below now before we go ahead we will quickly do an important derivation which will connect back to this equation so we can say that a system of particles like this will also have a center of mass and it can be expressed in terms of x y z coordinates as you learned in the previous lesson but here instead of using x y z coordinates we will use the vector notation and write the position of the center of mass as a position vector r then we can say r center of mass is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus m3 r3 and so on till the last particle mn rn divided by the total mass m that is instead of using x or y to indicate the position we are using the vector r which is a position vector here in fact it is always better to use this notation when you are working in three dimensions so if you pull m up here what we get is m r center of mass is equal to m1 r1 plus m2 r2 plus m3 r3 right up to m n r n then differentiating this equation with respect to time gives us this or mv center of mass is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 
plus M3V3 right up to MNVN. Now we can differentiate this equation with respect to time again to get MA center of mass is equal to M1A1 plus M2A2 plus M3A3 and so on. And finally, from Newton's second law, we can write this equation as MA center of mass is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 and so on till Fn. So these derivations tell us that even though the center of mass is just a geometrical point, it has a position, a velocity and an acceleration as if it were a particle itself. Now coming back to this equation, if we compare it with this one, we see that P is equal to mv center of mass, which is another way to define the linear momentum of a system of particles. That is, the linear momentum of a system of particles is equal to the product of the total mass m of the system and the velocity of the center of mass. So you see, in this equation, we do not quite need to know these values. Instead, if we know one entity that is V center of mass, you can find the momentum of the system. In fact, to illustrate this point, imagine catching a ball. What you're really doing is catching a collection of large number of molecules of masses M1, M2, M3 and so on. And the impulse you feel in your hand is due to the total momentum of this entire collection. But then this impulse is the same as if you were catching a single particle of mass m, which is equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 and so on, moving with the velocity v center of mass or velocity of the collections center of mass. So this helps us to understand the idea of representing an extended body as a particle. Let us now take the time derivative of this equation and what we get is dp upon dt is equal to m dv center of mass upon dt which equals m a center of mass. Once again, if we compare this equation with this, it allows us to write Newton's second law for a system of particles as f net is equal to dp upon dt where F net is a net external force acting on the system. And you can see that this equation is the general form of the equation for a single particle, now written for a system of many particles. So the way you would read this equation would be quite similar to the way you read for a single particle. That is the net external force F net on a system of particles causes linear momentum P of the system to change. Again, we can read this another way and say the linear momentum of a system will change only if an external force acts on it. That is, if there is no external force, P of the system will not change. So you see, this topic requires a bit of careful studying before you can grasp the concept. Also, you should go through this playlist that includes linear momentum, its conservation, difference between impulse and force and finally elastic and inelastic collisions for a more rounded view. And if you like this lesson, do give a thumbs up. That'll be helpful and I will see you in the next lesson.